This morning we are chatting with uh, Roger Oatley. He is a senior with Oatley Vigman, who are all part and parcel of uh, Personal Injury Alliance. And uh, Roger, uh, every day we are seeing TV commercials, hearing radio commercials by uh, groups like MAD and whatnot, uh, associating drinking and driving with cars. Now, there is another issue. How serious a problem is drinking and boating? It's a big, big problem. And I think the root of it uh, lies in... The public perception, uh, we all have it, I'm afraid, that uh, boating is a fun, carefree time on the water, uh, which it should be and certainly is, but not to the extent that it's wide open as far as alcohol is concerned. Uh, Alcohol is just as dangerous in a boat as it is in a car, but somehow the the level of, of social a condemnation of uh, drinking in uh, a boat hasn't reached the same level that it has with all of us now as far as drinking and driving a car is concerned. So uh, as far as uh, drinking and boating, the driver can't drink, but uh, his passengers on the boat, are they allowed to have a few? Well, there are a lot of misconceptions about uh, alcohol in a boat. Uh, the simplest way to understand it is that nobody in the boat. Not just the driver, but the passengers too. Nobody can be drinking alcohol. That's how seriously the law takes it. And here's something else uh, that a lot of people don't know, and it's very, very important. If there's a conviction, not only will the operator of the boat lose his or her boating license, he or she will lose, at the same time, the license to operate a motor vehicle. So you could be out on the uh, lake having a great old time with uh, the family with a beer uh, in the, the holder that's provided in the boats, and uh, the OPP comes cruising up, and uh, you get convicted. You lose your boating license. But you can't drive your car either because you'll lose that license as well. And, of course, there is the, uh, the even bigger risk, and that is uh, causing serious injury or death to uh, yourself, your passengers, or others. Oh, you're absolutely right. I've had the uh, good fortune or misfortune to act for many, many people over the years who've been injured or, and, and families who've lost loved ones Uh, because of boating accidents, and they rarely turn out well. When we're in a car, uh, we're inside uh, a steel enclosure. We have uh, seat belts. We have airbags. We have a much better chance of uh, avoiding serious injury. But in a boat, nobody's belted in. There are no airbags. Uh, There's just a little bit of fiberglass between you and... uh, a high-speed missile coming into your into your own boat. Add to that the fact that there's a, a prop uh, spinning away uh, as the boat uh, carves through uh, the other boat. Uh, the injuries are, are horrendous. Uh, I, I've got a woman, lovely woman, uh, I'm acting for right now, and uh, literally all of her guts were ripped out by a prop. I've I've seen swimmers uh, killed or, or limbs ripped off them. Often boats will climb up right over top of another boat, and uh, as the prop spins through, uh, the carnage is just devastating. Um, we all need to appreciate that not only do we have a legal obligation, but we have a huge social and moral obligation to make sure nobody in our boat is using alcohol. Mel, right now, is there uh, somewhere on the internet where they can, uh, somebody who wants to get uh, more information about the issue, can they go? Good question. Uh, There are three member law firms of the Personal Injury Alliance, and each one of the firms, my firm, Oatley Vigmund, Thompson Rogers, the second firm, and McLeish Orlando, the third one, Uh, We all have very complete websites with all kinds of useful information, including all of this information about boating and alcohol. And uh, a quick read uh, could be a very important little bit of time well spent. 
All right, Roger, we want to thank you for joining us today and uh, giving us some insight into the issue of uh, boating and drinking. A pleasure. Thank you.